I haven't seen that map in 30, 40 years. At the moment, you're never really impressed. It grows on you as you get older, and you look back. It's a great surprise to me that it endured all these years. I figured by now, it wouldn't be even around anymore. Mr. Moses, there are a number of questions that I presume all prospective visitors would want to ask. The first one would be, well, how do you get here? Well, you get here by every form of locomotion known to man. The Panorama Project was conceived by Robert Moses, who was the controlling brain behind the World's Fair. Now, physically, Commissioner, what will the new fair look like, do you think? Well, physically, it will look uh, not unlike the 1939-1940 fair, only better, bigger. <laughs> he wanted to highlight the nuts and bolts of what New York City is and felt that this ambitious scale model would be jaw-dropping. The entire New York metropolitan area. 840,000 buildings in astonishing detail. He had his model-making firm, Lester and Associates, and he gave them this problem they had made big models for him before, but nothing on this scale. It was their genius that they were able to come up with the solutions, having never done it before. I learned in life to apply myself, and they saw that in me, so they gave me a shot. We didn't really have a background in model making, but we had a background in something else. They fabricated and milled every single aspect of it. Every house, the shape, the height of it, the streets, and all that. And we put everything down onto these insurance plates so they could put all the buildings down where they belong. Everything had to match. This shows exactly the size of the lots. These books were like the Bible and allowed them to achieve the degree of truth that they did. When you look at Manhattan, every building is fabricated out of wood, and they're all custom. Each skyscraper was individually crafted. And the girls used to have injection molded buildings. They used their judgments as a two-story, or one-story, or as a five-story. That gave them an idea how high the building is. As it turned out, it was one of the most popular attractions at the fair. What's the impression? I think everybody thought it was the greatest thing in the world. Nobody had seen anything like it. I was thinking about the people who made all those little buildings and what that process must have been like to create a building for every single building in New York City. On the one hand, there's a sense of scale and grandeur that needed to be communicated. But on the other hand, it's a very intimate scene. And then actually, I can make something to fit over this. Right, so it's a little bit taller. A little bit wider, a little bit taller. A little bigger. And then it might just sleeve over the thing that's yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. We had to bring two cranes into the panorama, house them on the ramp that surrounds the actual scale model, and find enough extension in them to be able to cover the shots that were needed for these scenes. And we had to bring a drone in, and it was scary. We have a camera attached to a drone flying over the panorama, and you know, we're just praying that it doesn't somehow collapse and crash the gorgeous constructions of these buildings. There are questions philosophically about where does the museum go with the panorama as it is today? How do we honor its place in history without altering it so much? World's fairs, as a rule, are ephemeral. Will there be anything lasting at this one? Oh, yes, indeed. I think that map is my legacy. And I always talk about it. You know, did you ever go see the New York City building? Yeah. You ever see the big map? Oh, yeah, that's great. I said, that was my job. <laughs> and I look back and say, I did this. It's, I don't know.
That's how I feel now.